The Backbone controller accessory is one of the most popular phone accessories out there, but it comes at a pretty hefty price of $100. Now, I of course have the PlayStation branded one, but functionally it's the exact same as the regular Backbone controller. You have all the buttons you would need to play any type of console game and various mobile games natively on the device. What's great about the Backbone is how simple it is and how fast it works with all different types of games. You literally just put your phone in, slide it in, and then boom, it is done. And after it's set up, which that's literally all it takes, you can immediately play on Xbox, PlayStation, or games natively on the device. It is extremely convenient. However, I do use a case for my phone, so unfortunately you can't use a case with this device, it just doesn't work. So anytime I use the backbone, I have to pop it out of this case, which thankfully for me is not very hard. I just take it out and then, then slide it in, whoops, backwards, and then boom, it's immediately ready to go. Now, you might have a phone that has a case where you have to like undo all the things up here in the corner, like that would be honestly terrible. So if you have a case that you use and that you trust and you don't wanna have to take your phone out constantly, I don't know if this is a good idea for you if it's a if it's a case that's like really hard to take off. Thankfully mine's just an easy snap off, snap on one. But as for the device itself, it feels really nice. It almost feels the exact same as it did whenever I bought it. The only difference now, nine months later, is this right trigger. So. Obviously, this is useful in a lot of games, from racing games, uh, shooting games. You're going to use this button a lot. The resistance has gone down a lot on this button. Like, it's it still goes up all the way, don't get me wrong. And honestly, it still feels okay to use. I can just feel the resistance in this trigger that I don't use as often way more than I feel the resistance in this trigger. So, it's just a little noticeable, but aside from that, durability-wise, this thing has lasted. I have two kids. They, they use it sometimes. It's been dropped. It's been thrown around and it still works just fine. And of course, when you don't have it attached to your phone, this is how it looks. I really like this extend function. It feels really nice. Haven't had any issues with it. I could see it maybe being a problem over time when you're constantly doing this over and over and like maybe bending it a little bit, but nine months later, still going pretty strong. This definitely has a lot of hours of use, like playing long JRPGs, shooters, action games, and it's still working almost the exact same as it has whenever I bought it. Like I said, the one difference being the trigger right here just feels a little loose, but nothing terrible. And in case you didn't know, you can actually charge this device as you're using it, which is really useful. I lay in bed playing it like this all the time, and that's really awesome. And you can have a headphone jack, so just like two wires coming from both sides. You got the whole gaming experience on the go. I mostly play it in bed. I guess if you play a lot of phone games, like natively, you can take it with you out of the house. For me personally though, I mostly play handheld games in my house and the convenience of this device has definitely been worth the $100 asking price without a doubt. Now as for the services, you're seeing some Bayonetta footage right now. This actually comes from the PS5 Remote Play app. PS5 Remote Play looks really crisp. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of lag every now and then or just some judder, but Ultimately, it's a great way to play your PS5 on the go. As for Xbox, I mostly do remote play. I don't usually use the cloud streaming service. And with the Xbox app on remote play, you're seeing a little bit of Gears of War footage. I didn't capture that much. It's sort of the opposite of PlayStation. The image isn't as crisp, but there's barely any delay. Like I don't really feel much delay at all unless I'm playing like a hardcore action game. If you're a huge iPhone gaming enthusiast, like if you subscribe to Apple Arcade, all of those games work with this controller and it, it, this is definitely worth it for you without a doubt. You don't have to get the PlayStation branded one. You can of course just get the black one that has the B, X, Y, A buttons and it's highly recommended. Like it comes at a premium price of $100 for an accessory and a lot of people aren't okay with that. But as for the backbone, don't count it out. This is a nine months later review and it's still fantastic. It's definitely worth the asking price. But thankfully I see it go on sale quite a bit. So you might end up finding it for like 60, 70 bucks. I've I've actually seen it as low as 50 before. It goes on sale all the time, and if you do catch it on a sale, it's definitely worth it. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Do you plan on getting a backbone device? Did this review convince you? <laughs> let me know everything, and I will talk to you guys next time. See ya.